Ah, Provincetown, Massachusetts, home to beaches, seagulls, boats, oh yeah, and the Provincetown Players. This group of artists and writers were vacationing in this cottage on the side of a beach. They decided to entertain themselves and their friends by presenting their plays. Oh, what a nice view. Hey guys, we should uh, show our place. <laughs> what do you think, Susan? That sounds lovely, George. Plays that had been rejected by the Washington Square players nonetheless. <laughs> the plays were a hit. They met up with Robert M. Jones, a new stagecraft designer, and set up two makeshift sets in an old war. That next summer, the group gathered again in Provincetown. One person that showed up was Eugene O'Neill, playwright and pioneer of American drama and theater. His play, Bound East for Cardiff, was performed. It's a starving ship. Plenty of work and no food. And the owner's riding around in carriages. This began his career as a playwright. The following summer led the players to form an official organization stationed out of New York City. Known by many as the Provincetown Playhouse, it provided space for American theater and drama to flourish and make a mark for itself. The Provincetown Players were host to American playwrights and plays as an alternative to Broadway. In the first two years in New York City, O'Neill presented six of his plays, Before Breakfast, Fog, The Sniper, Ill, The Long Voyage Home, and The Rope. O'Neill's plays were amongst the first in American history to use realism in theater and drama. What made these plays so special was the American dialect that was adopted to be used on stage. His plays contained the tragedy and darker sides of American society, mostly pulled from his own experiences and troubled relationships that he endured. In 1920, his first full-length play was produced at the Playhouse, Beyond the Horizon. He won a Nobel Prize in Literature for this play. As the players grew, they moved their third season into a new building. They rented out a larger building not far from their original location and began production there. During that time, Cook took a year <laughs> off from the Playhouse, leaving James Light in charge. Under James O'Neill's play, Dreamy Kid was produced. This made the players the second all-Caucasian theater group to hire only African-American actors for a presentation. Also, Emperor Jones, African-American actors Charles Gilpin and James Weldon Johnson said that the players were the initial and greatest force in opening up the way for Negroes on the dramatic stage. After Cook's death, Kenneth McGowan renamed the company the Experimental Theater. McGowan, a dramatic critic, Robert Edward Jones, and O'Neill took leadership over the group. In 1923, under this new leadership, they began producing plays in two different playhouses, one in New York City and the other in Greenwich Village, New York. After three seasons, the company parted ways and pursued individual interests and projects. The players pushed the experimental nature of their plays, opening up the start of American modernism. The group pushed forward a new professional theater that was to be recognized alongside with Broadway. It brought American theater and drama into the light as a serious art form for the first time. The plays had poetic verse while still entertaining political values and issues of the time. O'Neill and the other players paved the way for modern American theater and playwrights everywhere.